Well, folks, welcome back to Lewis Garage. Now, today we're just going to do something in the garage again. At last, back in the garage. This is really just uh, a quickie on the Bandit, purely because I've got a fault with it and I've got to fix it. I do ride it, it's summer season, we like to go out and play, and I've got a little leak on a slave cylinder. Now, a good friend of mine, John, uh, and I'll, I'll just put up a link uh, to his channel in a minute, we'll do that more towards the end. Uh, he had the same thing on his bike, and it turned out to be just a very simple seal, so I'm going to do mine as well. It's definitely a clutch slave cylinder seal because uh, the clutch fluid is reducing and I'm getting drips under the bike. It ain't hard, is it? Ever simple to work out. So, we've been on the net. I've got a kit, just under £20, and while we're at it, and we've got that casing off, I'm going to change the front sprocket as well. The reason being, the front sprocket turns three times faster than the rear, so I always put three sprockets on to every, three front sprockets on to every one rear, which means that they wear as a set and the chain doesn't wear too quick, because the front sprocket being worn out while you're riding along will be a thinner teeth, and those thinner teeth will beat into the chain harder and effectively wear the chain quicker. So the chain lasts longer if you change the front sprocket and they're only a tenner. So there we go, it's just going to be a slave cylinder to start with. Stick around, stay tuned, and show it works. Okay, this is the seal kit. It's ever so simple. Um, it, it's a, a big fat rubber seal inside. Um, that's the offending seal that's worn out inside the bike. So it's just a case of getting the slave cylinder off, take the seal out, put a new one in. It's as simple as that. Bit of housekeeping along the way, make sure that we do a clean job of it. We'll keep those safe there. And let's get this off. Right, this is a slave cylinder. Slave because it does what it's told by the master cylinder. Master cylinder at the top, when you pump the master cylinder, it pushes down and the cylinder is there, it's done, told what to do by the master, so it is known as the slave cylinder. So if you get referred to, that's what it is. The slave cylinder in any situation is the second cylinder in the chain, right? Now, that casing, the, the, the cylinder itself only comes off inwards. You can't pull it out, even though there's bolts here showing, it moves inwards. You have to take the casing off, then take it off the inside. So the first job is to take this casing off. Before we do that, we've got to take all this linkage off. And the simplest way, I've already loosened it, is to pull off the bolt one there in the front. That's it, one casing off. Now, don't expect it to be clean under here. In fact, it is going to be the messiest casing you ever saw. I've got this engine case, or this crash bar in the way, but it's okay. As you can see, that is one festering environment, it really is. So it pays to have perhaps a cat litter tray underneath, a kitty litter tray and a scraper and get all that cack into it before you go anywhere significant. But I've got to get that piston out in there. And before I can do that, the actual um, system itself, what I want to do is use the fluid to pump the piston out. So normally I break that seal, take the hose off out of the way and then use the take, the, take the, the entire cylinder out. But what I'm going to do is leave that plumbed in for now because when the retaining clip is off here, I take it out, I'm actually going to pump the piston out using the fluid, which is just the simplest way. It doesn't take much to get it out, but it's an easier way to do it. So the next thing to do is clean this a little bit up in here so I can actually get to the back of this cylinder, okay? All right. In the absence of any, I've got a cat litter tray, I'm just going to use this cardboard. This is just chain lubricant other stuff that gets in underneath there and it's pretty nasty. It's the nastiest part of the job. But now and again, it's good to do it anyway when you're uh, lubricating your chain. It's one of the reasons that I think Harley Davidson got it right by using belts because you don't have to lubricate them. Um, I like the whole shaft drive thing as well. The big adventure bikes with their shafts, I love them, I think they're excellent. Um, it's, just a, it's just an easier way to live your life, not having all this. This is the worst part of having a chain. Chains transfer the drive uh, more directly, uh, they're lighter and so on. There's all sorts of benefits to chains. But this is one of the downsides. Okay, that's about the contents there of what was inside the casing. Uh, it's mostly chain lubricant and dust and debris and sand from the road. This is what gets thrown up off your chain into this casing. So that's good enough for now. That's cleaned it out. You can get some brake cleaner in there and wash it all, but it's not overly important as long as you can see it and there's no excess debris in there. Uh, be careful raking around with a screwdriver too much because obviously it's an alley casing and there's little bits of rubber and stuff in there. Now the next task, you've got two screws there and this retaining plate has to come off so you can get the cylinder out itself. So those two things are normally an impact driver, but I lent mine to someone and never got it back, as is the way with things. So I've just got to use a big screwdriver, give a good fitting screw, and hope that I can get these 
both these two screws out without them mincing. And luckily, as this is a rat bike, I can wedge that against there without worrying about scratching it. Who cares? Get a good fit, good solid hold, and then off. Right, so as you can see by the swarf here, there was no way that was coming out for love nor money. So I've had to drill both the heads off. I've drilled the head out of the screw, basically drilled down the side and then untick it, took it out by hand. I'll just get a couple of new ones of those out of the bolt box in a minute. And now that plate is then removable. That's the retaining plate that fundamentally just holds the holds the piston from coming out completely. And while you've got it in your hand, just give it a clean off like the other one. I've got an old old towel's a good thing to use. An old knacker towel and throw it in the bin afterwards. Now it doesn't I mean it goes without saying that all hydraulics have to be meticulously clean so before this gets reassembled all that's going to be properly cleaned up so it's ready to assemble in the, in the right order now I've still got this pumped up I've still got it connected um, going to put that towel underneath just protect there so that it doesn't pop out all over penny pistol Thank you. and all we do now is reach up on the bar pull the clutch in as you can see it just pumps it out just enough if you pump it again and again, it will keep pushing fluid down until it brings out the piston enough for you to get hold of it. There we go. Now, just catching the rest of that fluid, what I'm going to do, that's just the fluid that's in the cylinder. I've got that out which I wanted. You can do it other ways. Uh, the mate John has a method of just taking this thing out um, and then blowing it out, literally putting your mouth over that. And blowing it out, I wouldn't use an airline because you don't need that much pressure. Uh, look at this. Where are we? Okay, now there's a little trick. Just take the hose off. Now, when you're, when you're bleeding up any system, it pays not to have the hose empty if you can help it. If, it's your, if you're changing hoses and putting dry ones on, you've no choice. But if the hose is plumbed up like this one is, it is handy if you don't allow the hose itself to empty its fluid. So just take the banjo off. Just preserve the two washers, pop the casing out of the way. Now, all I'm going to do is put that in place, and with a bungee here, literally just get hold of that and bungee out of the way. Now, all that's done is, I could grip, all that's done is just put a curve in it, a kink in it, and that's stopping any fluid coming out. So that hose is now virtually all plumbed up. So when I put it back together, there's probably only that much air in it, which is easy to just bleed through. Okay. Two bolts on the outside. And then this comes out inwards effectively. There we go. Once the two last bolts are out, get the bleed ripple out of the way because it obviously does protrude beyond you're going to put it back in afterwards anyway there we go, sometimes they just stick with dirt, that's it now naturally that needs to be cleaned ever so slightly Ain't that nasty? Mm. So let's do some housekeeping and some cleaning, and then it's reassembly from here. Right, what we've got here is, um, just before I reassemble this, I'm uh, in a position where I've got this classic issue. I've had this several times with these cases, where this little screw is what holds this plate on. Now they do tend to, with vibration, tighten themselves up so much that they either snap off or you get a situation where the thread is, is minced completely. Now being as this is a rat bike, and I've done this a few times, all I'm going to do with those two holes there that hold that cover and hold the piston in place to give me a good strong purchase because the, the threads are a bit naffed up in there 
is just I'm going to just drill through the back of the casing straight out into atmosphere and when I've come through the outside I'm just going to put a nut and bolt straight through the whole casing which will hold it on, job done. All I've got to do is drill big enough for the bolts that I intend to use. And with all these things it's better if you can to go a small bolt hole up to a bigger one, just pilot drill and then drill bigger each time. It's coming out quite close to this case, but it's ever so easy. I'll just put an Allen head in there, so that'll have an Allen bolt sticking out there, which wasn't there before. Pretty straightforward, really. Okay, to the other side. There we are. Obviously, there's lots of swarf in there, so I'm going to wash that out, because what I don't want is lumps of swarf later on working their way in around the chain. But that's getting there now. I just need to come out. One more size, and all we've got is a hole there and there, as I said, and there'll just be two bolt heads there in the future with a nut on the inside, so you eliminate the problem. Effectively, this is an upgrade. There's no reason why this has to have this stupid situation where you've got a little tiny blown screw that completely seizes in there. It's a better way to do it. Uh, even if it wasn't a rat bike, you could make a nice job of that with a couple of nice button heads or something. There we go. So let's keep going. Okay, got everything ready. Um, just the next thing is to prepare the cylinder or piston rather. Cylinder's all been cleaned out, loads of brake cleaner in there, then some fluid in. And there is a little recess you might better see. There's a little shiny ring round which you will inevitably get because these pistons only move probably half quarter of an inch at the most. So that's rubbing backwards and forwards on the same quarter of an inch of cast aluminium forever and ever and it's going to rub a little gap in it but it's you can see around the skirt compared to the new one it's just wear it's as simple as that fluid wasn't even coming out that much so pop the little spring off um, there's a new one I don't think there's much in it no there's nothing in the height that hasn't degenerated but we'll put the new one in because it's there and a little seal pick just lift that off and that's your seal, simple, get the old one off, dry it out. If you've got any debris or carbon or anything there or any caked on shit, just clean it out. That's absolutely spotless. So we'll just take the new one, pop it on and in immediately, absolutely immediately, you can see that that sticks out almost twice as much. So it's going to fill the gap more and prevent any problems. Simple as that. And the new new spring just pops into place. And there we are, ready to install in the cylinder. Okay, each time I would suggest a little bit of new fluid round and around the inside. And while you run your finger around the inside, you can feel for any little gritty bits. And they the obviously remove them. And that goes in. Now just pop it in using your thumbnail. Get it to one side gently, as straight as you can. Just pop it in, it doesn't take much. People ask all the time, and I've done this on brake caliper seals and all sorts. People ask constantly, I don't know where it was, I don't know where it was. I'll find the light, don't I? People ask constantly, should they use red rubber lube in this instance? I always suggest probably not really, because even though red rubber lube is perfectly okay for rubber, it is a contaminant. And any form of contaminant in there is going to con <laughs> contaminate it. It is a little bit of a tricky thing. Just breathe it in. Don't obviously force it, because you can flip the seal the other way around. And then it will jam up. But it does need a little tiny bit of coaxing. And probably rubber gloves as well, good idea. <laughs> as recommended by your dermatologist. <laughs> okay. That's it. Scary, working in real time. 
Okay. As you can see, it's a little fiddle. Just gonna feed it in with a soft edge. Here we go. Lovely. Nice, moving, excellent. Okay, that's that in. All we've got to do now is reconnect it, put everything back together. So it goes in from the inside, put that back on there. And as we saw before, it's retained by that plate. Now, obviously, if you're doing this, you'd normally put your two button head screws straight in there. But as I managed to mince them both quite spectacularly, as is quite normal, whoops, even on those two. I'm just using these two bolts straight through the casing from the other side to hold it in, and a couple of nylock nuts. That way in the future, they will never give me a problem again. So I can, in some ways, it's a, it's a mod, if you like, an advance over and above standard. You wouldn't expect the manufacturer to, to make something as daft as that now. Straighten the hole there. All we have to do hold the 10mm nut on the inside and turn the bolt and this in some ways is a lot stronger than what was there before you don't have to do it up nearly as tight but do use nylock nuts on the inside because if they come off they're going to be coming off in this environment and if a nut gets wedged in there when the bike's riding it can free up your chain and send it round your right leg or your left leg, depending on what bike you got. Okay. Bit fiddly down there with that. You won't get a socket in there, but you can do it. You have the power. That's it. Doesn't have to be that tight. Jobs are good, and that's holding that steel plate on now. Uh, in a way uh, better than it was ever held on before okay so that's ready we can now reinstall that and get it plumbed in reinstall your nipple and we'll come back to uh... now before I just bolt that on and reinstall it I'm going to change the sprocket so that concludes that bit. Uh, just as far as that's concerned, that's how you do a, a slave cylinder seal. It's extremely simple, it really is. I'm gonna do this in part one and part two, it's a bit, a bit, a bit long now. Um, your slave cylinder seal itself, as you saw, it's one seal. Those two little screws, you will always mince them. If you impact drive too hard, you can crack the casing. I have seen people have to replace the casings because they've been beating the life out of it with a, an impact driver and they've done uh, irreparable damage. Easiest way, quite simple. Drill down through the center of the bolt as I did. Drill big enough that it's six mil. Go and find yourself a five mil bolt and a nut that's an inch and a half long and just bolt the whole thing right through the casing. And as you can see, I'm sure you'll agree there, those are the two bolts in question. They don't look that bad. Even if you've got a smart looking bike and not a rat bike, you wouldn't, want, you wouldn't mind that. If you use nice stainless ones, nobody knows what they are. And they are doing, in my opinion, a better job of holding that retaining disc on to stop the piston coming out than the old screws were. So there we are, that's it. Thanks for tuning in and watching part one. Join us for part two, I'm gonna have a cup of tea and wash some of this off, and it's time for a new sprocket. All right, part two now. Uh, pretty much the simplest thing you could wish, just changing a front sprocket is ever so easy, and I'm gonna show you a reason why when we get involved in it. Um, taking your front sprocket off, you don't need to take the wheel out. Really isn't important, uh, it's a simple way to do it. Many people have covered it. It's ever so easy, so I'm not gonna go into too much great detail, but very simply, you've got here, you've got a lock tabber which is a, a washer at the back that you get chisel and it bends over. Um, quite simply, as this washer sticks out, when you're fitting it, you pop a chisel behind, you chisel a bit, a bit forward and you bend the tab over to rest up against the nut so the nut doesn't move because that washer, as you'll see in a minute, has got teeth on the inside so it doesn't turn. Uh, but I've tapped that back using the back brake. Uh, quick technique, I'll show you now. All I usually do, jump on the bike, over this side, put your foot on the back brake, spanner on the nut, 
that holds it still and then pull forward simple as that it's undone Okay, so that's now loose. We'll just continue to take that off. Again, I had a 32 mil socket and lent it out. Moral of the story, never lend your tools out. they never come back. Feed that off the center. All I've done is a block tab. I spoke about it's got teeth around the inside so that they you see them on there so that they they locate on the shaft and don't turn independently of the shaft which is why that works quite well good system now all we do is with the chain attached all I've done is pull the wheel right forward so the chains hanging loose and then you can pull the sprocket off with the chain attached pull all the meat up all the spare chain up into the casing area and pull it off and that's how it comes out a bit of a wrestling match but it comes out i'm going to clean this up and i'm going to show you something pretty amazing right here's the old one here's the new one check out the amount of wear see if you can see it you see the amount of wear on those teeth. Absolutely incredible. They have just started a hook. You can kind of see there's a slight cast that way to the teeth, which is where it's pulling at the bottom. As it's pulling, it's bending them at the bottom. So they're curving that way or pulling at the top rather. But that definitely is had it. Now that new sprocket, obviously the thicker teeth here are going to fill out the gaps in the chain better and effectively the way this works is to prolong the life of the chain your chain is the most expensive component a hundred link chains about 75 pounds for a decent quality one you may pay even more than that these are a tenner literally 10 pounds i think that's including postage when it pen mm -hmm. about eight quid something like that plus the postage 15 tooth sprocket for the front of your bandit ever so simple it really really is and the principle is you've got 15 teeth on this, 45 on the back, so three times less. There's three times as many teeth on the back, so you're sharing the pulling weight three times. So this is doing three times more rotating and taking three times more hits from the chain as it turns round than the back sprocket. So you should put three of these on to one on the run. This is something that I stagger to believe that most people don't realise. So many people I speak to say, I've never heard of this. I just changed the whole set. The reason you're changing the whole set is that this was worn out ages ago perhaps 10,000 miles ago and you've carried on riding or this one you've carried on riding on it and as these get thinner and thinner they're going into the holes in the chain or the gaps in the chain with a bit of a whack and you can tell spin the back wheel around you start here dig, 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 dig. you can hear it click 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 as it's going around spin that one around and you get a much smoother sound because it's it's locating in those holes better as this is going into those gaps with a bit of a pop it's actually hitting them and that means a minor impact hundreds and hundreds thousands and thousands of times multiplied as you ride around all the time and each little impact causes wear no impacts with that lots of impacts with that so reduce the impacts reduce the wear it really ain't hard is it okay so what we're gonna do is poke the new one on and then bolt it back together do. doesn't go either way around this particular one has got two threaded holes in there and what they're for is draw bolts all you do is if that's stuck in place and you can't get it off you put a bolt in each side, you wind the bolt in, as you wind the bolt in, it pushes the sprocket off, but you don't need it. This goes on okay as it is. Pop that in the chain first. There we go. You can probably see it's a little bit of a wrestling match, but having said that, it's worth it because the time you save doing that, wriggle, wriggle, you haven't got to take that wheel off. There we are, she's on. That is it. Wipe off a little bit of that. This is the filthiest place to work on your bike. Around the chain. Absolutely minging in there. Chain lube just gets black. There's a little tab washer we said about. Now, make sure 
the sprocket locates right on and you've got a little bit of the shaft teeth protruding because you need them for this tab. So the tab goes on, locate the tab, spin the nut back in and that is as simple as it is while you've got the casing off. Now I really think I would have done this now. I think I might have left this for about probably another two or three thousand miles but I had this casing off to do the cylinder so why not it's literally eight quid and while I was ordering the seals I said Demar you got a front sprocket for a bandage yet yeah, I'll stick that in the box for you eight quid job done now there is I just want to make a mention of this before my mate John chews my nuts out this is the seal for the push rod but mine is not leaking and I'm a firm believer of if the car ain't broke don't fix it so what I could do while that sprocket's off is take the shaft out, take the retaining tab out and pop a new one of those in. I know it's a simple thing to do and I know it would work and I know that it isn't leaking. And if it is leaking, if it starts leaking in a month or two's time, it's a five minute job. It's not a problem. I'd rather keep that seal safe for the time I need it. I've never had one of those output shaft seals leak. Never, or a push rod seal. Never had one weep. The only time oil comes through this is actually when you get an overfill from the other side. There's no pressure against the back of this. And what this is more for is stopping debris and dirt going down the push shot tube from this environment. A lot of people think that this seal is purely to stop oil leaking out. It isn't, that's a misconception. What this seal is for is to keep dirt out of the push rod seal, push rod shaft or push rod tube that goes all the way through the other side to the clutch. Because obviously if you get dirt and debris inside that shaft, it's going to jam up the rod. So that's what it's for. The rod's moving freely. When you move it, you can sometimes hear, <laughs> you can hear it started to get grease and so inside it. This isn't, it's absolutely silky smooth. So I'm not going to change that, I'm not going to bother. It's good enough as it is. All I'm going to do is bolt this back up and hook everything back up now. So there you go. All I'm doing with this is sitting on the bike, pushing my right foot down on the brake pedal just to stop the wheel turning. I don't like using impact guns. I do hear a lot of chat about people using impact guns, but the shaft in the center has teeth on it, and the shaft itself is extremely, um, what's the right word? Brittle, not brittle. The shaft is hard. Right, now that's not done up that tight. Okay. That's enough. Now, Gently tapping that tab back over, just so that it sits neatly against the chain, uh, the nut rather, either side. There we go. I know I just said about impact guns, but a few taps like that are not an issue. It's an impact gun going on there and machine gunning in, in a rotating way, which is rotating against teeth and stuff that can chip them. I don't like it. Some people think they're fine. Fitters use them all the time because they're quick. I personally, put the foot on the brakes and just lift it off. And don't do that nut up too tight, it just doesn't need to pick too tight. It's uh, a right handed thread, which means it's going left all the time, so it's not undoing itself. Make sure that lock tabs down neatly against the nut, and that's good. There we are, ready to put it back together. Right, as well with this I always keep a bag full of these fresh steel banjos and washers um, just because it saves getting a leak and that leak especially in this instance going down the side of your casing and taking all the paint off your casing because you wouldn't want that would you <laughs> you'd have to rat, hey, it. John, rat it you'd have to repaint it <laughs> or just rat it eh? Nah. Now the usual procedure for bleeding up, um, I've got a video on that, so uh, if you're not sure on how to do it, it is ever so simple. Simple principle, get it to the point where you pull it in, right into the bar so that you're pushing on the, on the seal, and then open up and close up the nipple. Opening and closing the nipple while you hold the lever in, lever in that's the simplest technique and it works every time. Pull the lever in and hold it in, open, shut. 
then let the leaf go. Any other order, you'll suck air back up from underneath. And then, obviously it doesn't matter on a rat bike, but keep make sure you keep lots of cloths and stuff there so you don't get any fluid over your paintwork. It is corrosive. One more of those. Open and shut. Now that, you'll get a feel for it in the end. Your clutch will feel correct. It'll feel how you like it and you'll know there's no sponginess in it. It'll probably feel better because remember that little seal that we've replaced inside the cylinder, it is now absolutely smooth and tight. It'll have a smoother action to it because the rubber has got its finished coating on it. It's not worn, so it will feel better. And you'll feel good about yourself because you've done something to your bike that actually improves it and that's always good and it's safe. Now all I've got to do now is put this all back together, button it all up and we can call it done. Okay, so there we are. That is pretty much as easy as it is. It's a very simple task. Um, slave cylinder the seal. You don't get much. This bike's done 45,000 miles and that's the first one ever. So they really do last a long time. It's not something you should be worried about too much. However, you are in that casing now and again, changing, changing, uh, changing sprockets and obviously cleaning it every now and again. Part of your long-term cleaning regime should be taking that casing off probably every year and cleaning inside it. When you do the chain itself with the toothbrush and the spray like I showed in a previous video, it's a good time to take that casing off and give that a good clean out as well because what collects up in there is chain wax and sand and grit. And obviously there we are, that's it. Change something. out the front sprocket. I do that every three to the rear. So about every 5,000 miles or more, I'll change that front sprocket. As you can see, hooked over quite nasty. The real one's fine, the chain is fine. You can tell the chain, pull the chain off the back of the sprocket, not the top or the bottom of the back. If it doesn't come off too much, it's cool. If it comes off enough to get a pencil through, then the rear sprocket's gone as well. But get that front one changed, about every three or 4,000 miles and they are 10 pound. Seals, done, not a, pre uh, not a problem. Very simple task if you need any help on it. Really just refer back to the video or drop me a line, okay? Thanks it. That's all for now. Me and Penny going out for a lunchtime pint now. What do you reckon? Yep. I reckon <laughs> we'll call it done. Take it easy, ride safe. Thanks for watching the Boys Garage. I'll see you next time.